Hey everyone, welcome back to BDG Reviews, and it's night 31 of the 31 Days of Horror. Last night of the of the month, so happy Halloween. Uh, my, usually for the last day, I try to do something a little bit like different, not just like a standard review or whatever. So what I've got for you tonight is something... Uh, this is something that was actually brought up by a subscriber. Um, they mentioned uh, I'd done a review over on Body Bags for um, the Woman in Black, the the original. And I was talking about like the the atmosphere that it builds and everything. And they were saying, you know, like they'd like to see more of that. So what I've got here are ten films who just whose atmosphere is, I, I in my opinion, perfect. Now, I've also got a few uh, honorable mentions. Uh, I'll bring those up, like, first, you know. But th what I'm going to say about these picks is these are not your typical picks. You know, most people would be like, like, a, um, atmospheric horror movie. Oh, and they'd say, like, The Shining. I've said before, I don't find The Shining scary, so, so that wouldn't be in here anyways. But, you know, they say the same, like, the same sort of things. I've decided to go with something different, something that is overlooked. People don't don't talk about these ones uh, to do with uh, covering atmosphere, but uh, I'm going to talk about how the atmosphere works for each one as well. So, we'll see. So first up, let's get in to the honorable mentions. Now, these are honorable mentions mainly because, yeah, they have atmosphere, but it's something else that causes it, if that makes sense. I'll get into it. First up, Fire in the Sky. This is the quintessential alien abduction horror movie, and it is terrifying. It's genuinely terrifying, and it just works so good. And the atmosphere that builds in this is... You know, I don't know how to put it. It's like the atmosphere is built from, you know, this alien abduction, obviously. But, and like you get this whole town that's like not believing these guys that something has happened to their friend. They think they murdered him. You know, it's just like it's got a strange atmosphere to it, but it permeates the entire film and it's damn good. So, Fire in the Sky, honorable mention. This next honorable mention is, how can I put this delicately? This isn't so much the movie itself, it's, so, it's more so when you realize about the director, it weirds you out a little bit. And that is uh, Jeepers Creepers 2. Um, Jeepers Creepers 1 as well, but... If you don't know, Victor Salva, who directed them, is a pedophile. He was arrested for it and everything. And th what makes these creepy, though, is the fact, even to this day, you know, he's supposedly rehabilitated. However you rehabilitate a pedo, I don't know. But um, these movies tend to linger on certain shots of, like, young people. And it 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 has it builds an atmosphere of creepiness that if you don't know that he's a pedo, you know you still get like this uncomfortable feeling. Knowing he's a pedo, you know why it's an uncomfortable feeling. So I'll leave it at that. I will say this: um, the Jeepers Creepers movies one and two. One is phenomenal, two is okay, three is trash, and uh, Reborn is okay. So, if you want these movies, I would recommend um, going to a thrift store and picking them up, you know. You can get them in dollar bins and stuff, you know, they're, they're not hard to get. But yeah. And last up for honorable mentions, this one isn't a horror movie, 
And uh, it may take a bit of explaining. I've talked about it before, but I'll do it again. Uh, Patriotism by uh, Yukio Mishima. What makes this atmospheric, the atmosphere in this, is the fact that um, you watch the movie. It's about this, you know, it's like essentially a a no play of um, this soldier guy who's tried to take over, like, you know, stage like a coup over the government or whatever. And um, he kills himself. That's pretty much the entire story. So you think that doesn't sound overly, like, you know, atmospheric or whatever. But then when you realize, like, something like, what year was it, 66? I think less than 10 years later... Yukio Mishima, who starred in this movie, directed it, wrote it, did the exact same thing in reality. He tried to essentially stage a coup. It didn't work. And then he committed ritual suicide by splitting his stomach open and then having his head cut off. So, what makes the atmosphere in this creepy is the foreshadowing of what eventually really happened. So, to this day, this movie is beautiful, it's haunting, and when you know the the eventual outcome, you know, it's very poignant. So, yeah. Now, we'll get into the ten atmospheric horror films and everything. This is in no particular order. I'm just going to, like, list them off and say why the atmosphere in it just works. Um, I'm going to start off with a relatively new one, and that's uh, The Color Out of Space with Nicolas Cage. This gets Lovecraftian atmosphere perfectly. It, it reeks of cosmic horror, and it does it right. Lovecraft is not an easy person to, um to make movies of, you know, a lot of stuff they say is pretty much unfilmable because a lot of it is like, I saw something, it's like so terrible. It was like beyond human imagining. And like, I went insane or whatever. Um, this is able to portray it well enough that you, you get the feeling of cosmic dread. And it's something that doesn't, it isn't easy to film, and when it does, it needs to be celebrated. And this is a movie that needs to be celebrated. Honestly, I'm... Slight rant. You can find this movie now on Blu-ray for 5 bucks in Walmart $5 bins. Um, I would recommend everyone go and buy a copy. If you, if you don't like it, pass it on to a friend. Spread the love. This movie needs, it needs more, you know, and, um, to be relegated to the, to the $5 bin is a waste. So yeah, color out of space, Lovecraftian, Lovecraftian horror and, uh, atmosphere to the gills. Next up. This is a movie that that just feels uncomfortable when you watch it. And that's Pontypool. Uh, basic plot is it takes place on a, a, not a, um, a radio like broadcast type thing. And um, essentially like a zombie type virus is being spread through words, through talking. And it, you know, so pretty much the entire film is just in this little, like, office, essentially. And you're you're hearing what's going on outside, and you're hearing about certain things. And it's building this tension, like, it's just ramping it up little by little by little. And by the time the end rolls around, you are, like, clawing at your skin, like, the go! You know, it manages to build that atmosphere so well. And honestly, I, I love this movie. It needs um, it needs a, a proper release. This is a, 
British Blu-ray. I don't think there's ever been a U.S. or, like, uh, Canadian Blu-ray. It deserves it. It deserves, like, the special treatment. It's just good. And uh, atmospheric is all hell. Next up, this is a, this is a movie that is everything that... Um, Everything that Slender Man should have been, that's Pie This movie, again, drips menace, it, drimp, it drips atmosphere. Everything about this just works. And, like, the basic plot, you have this girl and, like, she's sort of, like, really pissed off with her mother. And she ends up doing this, uh, this pie whack it like spell type thing out in the woods and like ends up like summoning some type of like creature type thing and the tension just like just turning a knob it just keeps going up and up and up and up and up oh so good the atmosphere in this is phenomenal this is another one that deserves a better release than we got. This is uh, again a British DVD. Uh, I don't, I don't know if there's ever been a Blu-ray, um, which is a damn shame because it's so good. Double feature that with Pontypool, you're set. Next we have Legend of Hell House. This is a classic from back in... What year was this made? 1973. Uh, hold on, just... So. That's the other artwork. If you can see it. This is a haunted house movie done right. It's one of the few that really get it. And... Again, it's it's you're watching the movie and you're getting like almost like physically like <laughs> like like it it it's that atmospheric and it just again it just works. A lot of these just work. And you can't go wrong with Legend of Hell House. Um it follows the, the story from uh what's his name uh Richard Matheson. And um one thing I will recommend, if you've seen this movie and you like it, I definitely recommend picking up the Hell House uh, graphic novel. It's a good, th thick-sized thing. Really solid, really creepy, and it covers this story really well. So, you know. Next, we have the fear footage. I have championed this movie since I first saw it. This is... Easily, like, I think the scariest movie in the past 15 years. E easily, like, hands down. It's very rare as a movie fan, especially as a horror fan, that you find a movie that actually scares you. And this just does. It does everything right. Um, I mean, even, like, the disc. You know, that's, like, that's, that's a handmade disc. It's got, like, blood splatter on it, evidence, bag, all this other cool stuff with it but it's purely this is found footage that just it, it works it's i would say this is a perfect found footage movie and it's creepy and it sticks with you and while you're watching it you're 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 feeling yourself getting up, upset like the basic plot is uh this cop gets uh called out and it says um you know there's this house here um this house was torn down about five years ago or something like that and it's like and now it's back so he's coming out to investigate this and you know he's walking around this house some supernatural type stuff's happening he finds this tape you know it says like the fear footage on it or whatever and he puts it in the VHS and he plays it, you know, and it's, it's essentially an anthology type thing, but the wraparound of being at this house is terrifying. And, and, and for the most part, he's just walking around this house, but it's so creepy. Every, you, you feel every shadow is going to jump at you. And a lot of time that does. So the fear footage, definite high water marker. Next, we got uh, The Ring. Well, Ring. 
Japanese movie. I will not call this Ringu. I've said before, I'll say it again. An English word spoken in Japanese, you don't write the the English version of it. You write it as it, its actual name. This movie's actual name was Ring. Just saying. I, I will I will die on this hill. This is something I that pisses me off to no end. The people that go on and on about like, oh, Ringu, Ringu. It's like, fuck you. Ring. This is another one that uses atmosphere to its... to the nth degree. You know there's a ticking clock going on. You know they, they, she's, they've seen this video, they got seven days. You feel it ticking down. You, you, you want to jump up on the screen and say, like, go! Like, stop screwing around. Um, and it just works perfectly. Honestly, Ring is always has been one of my favorite movies, and uh, this particular release, this is from the Arrow box set, um, box sets over there, <laughs> um, but uh, this one in particular has that level of atmosphere and creepiness that's just like wrong, you know. I, I've, you know what? I'm going to do an addendum to this 31 Days of Horror. I'll release it on Halloween as well, so if you're watching this video, it's probably out by now. Just on the, the nature of fear and everything. I got, I got some stuff to say about that, so. Next up. Atmosphere falling out the ass. City of the Living Dead by Lucio Fulci. Now, this could be said for... Um, any of Fulci's Gates of Hell trilogy. You know, the Beyond, uh, House by the Cemetery, House by the Cemetery, a bit less so, at least in my opinion. I've always found that one kind of weak. But the atmosphere that builds in City of the Living Dead is just awesome. Like, it's building and it's building, and you know there's not going to be a happy ending here. And again, you want to jump up on screen and you want to just like shake people and say, get the hell out. But it, it just builds and builds and builds. That's something with atmospheric horror. It builds and builds and builds. And it's just kind of awesome when it does. City of the Living Dead. Uh, my buddy Rob knows all about this. Uh, he's a big fan. So... Next, this one is an odd one, simply because of the name. This is The Devil's Daughter. Now, if you've seen this cover, you probably know this movie as The Black Coat's Daughter, which is its actual name. Um, for some reason, up here in Canada, they released it as The Devil's Daughter. What makes this weird is they released it as The Devil's Daughter. This cost me, like, I don't know, ten ninety nine or something. Next to it was a DVD of the Black Coat's Daughter. Exact same movie, no difference. Thirty bucks because it was uh, considered an import. You know, take that for what you will. Just saying, this movie, it's just outstanding. It really is. You got these. Uh, yeah, I'm trying to see how much I should spoil here. There's evil afoot over, like, the winter break at, like, this, like, university. And, um... Every part of this movie just bothers you in so many ways. It really does. And it just... It's one of those ones, another one that just feels wrong. And... It's so awesome to watch. This is a movie I wish I could... There are a few movies that I wish I could completely retcon from my brain and then just see them again from a blind viewing and just enjoy from nothing right up to 
to the end. You know, this is another one of them, and it's really damn good. Second to last, we have Ghost Watch. <laughs> the classic Ghost Watch. UK film. Uh, a mockumentary that actually was pretty much banned in Britain after its initial showing. It showed, and then it bothered so many people that, you know, it didn't get, like, released or anything for many, many years. Now, now eventually, you know, we have this nice Blu-ray box and everything, and uh, it's just good. And... Part of you, how can I put this? When people saw this at the time, it was set up in such a way like the the people who star in it are actual TV presenters. They're people who like you you'd, you would have seen them before on like reality type shows, like um, you know look, looking at like investigating things and things like that. The main our main uh, actor guy is an actual news reporter. You know, so everything was... This is very much like... Um, when you think of the original radio broadcast of War of the Worlds, that's kind of what you got here, in that it was played seriously, and it was done in such a way where, like, they'd have, like, people calling in and saying stuff. This was all scripted it was all film you know but pe people believed it and the atmosphere in this just works so good ghost watch is a certified classic last up the movie that started this whole particular video the woman in black <clears throat> this is the original woman in black from 1989 and this is a perfect example, because this is done completely with atmosphere. <clears throat> the actual things that you see in this movie aren't necessarily overly scary. Like, you see a woman dressed in black. Like, literally, that's her on the back there. I mean, she's got some, like, dark makeup around the eyes and sort of thing. And it's, it's not overly scary, but the atmosphere that builds up throughout the movie, again, it just ratchets it up bit by bit by bit by bit. And it's another one you want to jump up on the screen just say, like, get out of here. No good is coming from this situation and you're still here. Move it. But you can't. And it's perfect. This movie... Honestly, the remake doesn't do it justice. The remake is a good movie. Um, but I would take this version over it any day of the week. So just saying. Yeah. Woman in Black. So yeah, there you go. There's ten um, highly atmospheric uh, movies... This has been a pretty good video, 23 minutes, you know, pretty decent. You know what, I'm going to throw one more in here right at the end. And this is going to come as a shock to some people because I absolutely hate this movie. But its atmosphere can't be denied, and that's Skinamarink. I can't stand it, I think it's the biggest piece of cinematic trash ever filmed, but... The uncomfortableness you have watching that movie, the it it just feels wrong. And when a movie can make it feel wrong when you're watching it, that kinda is that kinda is something, isn't it? So yeah. That's it for me. This has been uh, the 31 Days of Horror. I hope you've enjoyed. hope you've watched uh, some other people's uh, entries. I know uh, Rob has done 31 Days over on VHS 82 Apostrophe, so feel free to look him up and just check out his stuff as well. Got some interesting stuff on there. And, um...
yeah. So that's it for me. See you next time.